us about some of the trainings um, that that that's offered at Fidza, at Fidzana, um, uh, Estates that you offer to scheme executives and how can one um, um, use these ones and as as a as a body corporate and as a scheme. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned all of those ones and I'm sure that um, our family watching will really really appreciate and really use them so that they can also get that information. But just talk us through um, some of the training options that you guys have. <laughs> All right. Um, I think you first need to know that this is unique. Um, I'm not aware of any other managing agent in South Africa that provides this kind of training for scheme executives. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it is a weekday, so that means we are talking everything property. And tonight, if you live in an estate, you have a sectional title in your portfolio, or maybe you're living in an apartment, you definitely want to listen in on the conversation tonight. And if you're part of our regulars, thank you so much for always coming back and for always coming to Mark the Register. Hit that green button on the comment section. Let us know that you are here. And if you're joining us from the Twitter spaces, thank you so much also for joining us tonight. Uh, my guest tonight is Pearl Skeltema, who is the CEO of Zan Estate. Um, Pearl, good evening and welcome to the, the podcast. To me, thank you so much. I really appreciate your invitation. Thank you. It's a, it's absolute, it's an absolute pleasure. So tonight we are talking um, sectional title schemes and um, the different um things that the trustees and people who are in these uh, board of trustees need to know so that they can they can adhere. Um, talk, to, talk to us a bit about how um, these are, um, are set up, who, who are the people who are, who are trustees, what makes them trustees, and how, how really um, it operates. Okay, well, first of all, a body corporate, and we need to get the terminology correct, Yes, a definitely. body corporate consists of the sum total of all the registered members. And in terms of the legislation, they are required to have an annual general meeting once a year. At this meeting, trustees, or as they're now being called, scheme executives, are being elected at every annual general meeting. So we often hear people say, you know, these trustees then do just what they want. I want to say to you, members, you have the opportunity at every annual general meeting to appoint trustees or scheme executives of your choice so that they can look after your investment until the next annual general meeting. So trustees is usually appointed for a year at a time. At the next AGM, they can either be re-elected or new members can be elected. So that is how trustees are nominated or elected annually. Um, thereafter, a lot of responsibilities fall on the shoulders of these scheme executives. And the new legislation, that is now the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, Act 8 of 2011, which came into effect on the 7th of October 2016, placed much more responsibility on the shoulders of these scheme executives. And remember, they are not being remunerated, and yet they have to look after your investment and ensure that it is to the enjoyment and to the benefit of all. So what are their responsibilities? Trustees have to make sure that the body corporate is insured sufficiently. They have to have meetings. They have to prepare annual budgets. They have to approve expenditure. They have to make sure that proper maintenance is being done in terms of the required legislation. They have to have a 10-year maintenance plan in place. They have to prepare budgets according to this maintenance plan to make sure that sufficient funds are available to perform these functions. So, yes, um, it is often thought that the managing agent is mainly responsible for these um, responsibilities, and that's not the case. The managing agent is merely an administrator or a service provider to the body corporate who is representative by the trustees, um, who is represented by the trustees. So, yeah, the managing agent has no authority 
to take decisions on behalf of these trustees. They can act on instruction of the trustees. They can do the necessary homework and preparations. But at the end of the day, it is the trustees that actually make things happen. Thank you so much for that. Um, let's talk a little bit more now about the Sectional uh, Title Scheme Management Act that you spoke to a little bit earlier. Um, and you did speak that it's one of, it's, an, it's a national act, so this is something that is happening throughout the country. Um, talk to us a bit more of what, what it entails. Um, what, are, what are some of the, the things that are contained in this act and why it's important that all sectional title schemes um, follow the act? Okay, well, first of all, you have the Act, and then you have rules attached to the Act. The first rule is the Management Act, uh, or the Management Rules, apology for that, um, which prescribes exactly what you asked for before. Who are trustees? How are they being elected? Meetings of owners, meetings of trustees, what would constitute a quorum? It prescribes the responsibilities of trustees in terms of maintenance, in terms of finances, in terms of insurance. And then you get a second set of rules, which is called the conduct rules. Um, they were previously referred to as the house rules. Um, that pertains to noise. May you uh, do car repairs on common property? Um, at what time should you place out your bin? Um, pest control, pets. Are you allowed to have pets and what are the rules pertaining to having pets? So um, this is in short what the Act and its regulations prescribe. And this has to be adhered to by the members as well as the scheme um, executives. I also want to mention that on the 7th of October 2016, a second Act came into effect, which is called the Community Schemes Ombud Service Act. So the government established a body, which is commonly referred to as CSOS, which or where you can declare disputes. If you are unhappy with rules or unhappy with the way things are handled or the finances of your building, you can lodge a formal complaint at CSOS where a process is followed to have that dispute resolved. It is, uh, first of all, the first step to that is a conciliation session, which is a one-on-one -on -one situation. And the conciliator's um, task is to see if he can find a win-win situation for all. Um, if that cannot be established, the matter will be referred to um, it adjudication, which is a much more formal process and once a ruling is made, that can only be overturned in the High Court. So it's actually very, very potent um, what they can rule for, either um, against or for the complainant. But what I wanted to mention, that also consists of an act and regulations. And what is imperative to know is that under the regulations, Chapter 4, let me just quickly check, um, uh, regulation number 14 actually places an obligation, an obligation on the scheme executives to get themselves trained, to familiarise themselves with the governance of their scheme. And this does not only apply to sectional title, this also applies to homeowners associations, mm. to any form of community scheme, retirement villages, so the scheme, elected scheme executives have to have a thorough knowledge of their schemes, what is going on in their finances, what maintenance is required, how they, are they planning to execute to have this maintenance done. So there is actually an enforcement in the CSAS Act where scheme executives have to train and familiarise themselves with what is going on in their specific scheme. Sure, thank you so much. And um, talking about the training, that's one of the things we will jump into um, just not too long from now. The, the one question I have from, from the conversation we just had is um, when we're talking about this act, is it, it does it have specific um, rules or the ground rules and all of those things that can be am amended and maybe customized to the, to the type of estates that we are talking to? Or do we have, um, is, it, is, it, is it generic and expected to be adhered to 
to wherever because for, I'm, I'm i'm assuming that in some in some complexes you're not able to do something and in others you're able to do something else is this then added as an annex char how how is that then uh, accounted for in sectional title rules can be amended management okay. rules is a very difficult process to have changed uh, if you want to make changes or amendments to the management rules, um, you have to call a special general meeting, 30 days notice. There has to be an 80% quorum present of all members, and all 80% must be in favour of those amendments. So it's rather difficult to have changes to management rules. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones talking about trustees, how they are elected, meetings of owners, finances, budgets, AGMs, etc. Okay. Conduct rules is a far more easier process. If you want to change conduct rules, because you are quite right, conduct rules for one scheme doesn't necessarily um, apply to another scheme. That is fairly easy to do. You call a meeting, once again, 30 days notice, an ordinary quorum of 33.3% has to be present and 75% of the quorum present must be in favor of those amendments. So what do you do once you've obtained the permission, either by unanimous or by special resolution? Within 10 days after this meeting, these amendments have to be filed with the Community Schemes Ombud Service. The Chief Ombud would then um, uh, peruse and revise the rules. And once approved and stamped by the Chief Ombud, those rules become applicable and enforceable. So, yes, it can be changed. In homeowners association, um, all homeowners associa associations are governed by the mem Memorandum of Incorporation, shortly referred to as the MOI. And that MOI would prescribe the process of how to change such. Yeah, and you know, um, you, you find that in the different estates or even sections, as you mentioned, um, that some of these rules are still in effect. You know, um, nobody has been intentional about um, removing them, like because um, with with um, the different challenges that we still have as COVID-19 is still very much a part of um, our reality, um, is, is this something that should change? And hopefully the education and training is, is one of those things that can, um, that can help the different um, schemes. So I just want to so then now hop on to the education and training and say if if a trust a, um, a body corporate has been set up um, and scheme executives have been elected, uh, what what initiatives can be taken to ensure that um, these people are trained and they're fit for for their responsibilities? Uh, that's rather difficult because the way they educate themselves is not prescribed in the act at all, but. There are many forums that provide very valuable information to current scheme executives or newly appointed scheme executives. And I would like to mention a few of those. The Community Schemes Ombud Service CSOS um, is providing training on certain selective topics from time to time. They do that in all provinces um, and they widely advertise that. It's usually free of charge and anyone can attend. Um, those seminars or webinars, even online meetings, where information is um, shared on whatever topic is pertinent at that point in time. We also have NAMA, the National Association of Managing Agent, uh, Agents, that provides training to managing agents and their clients being the scheme executives. This is also done regionally and it's also widely advertised. Um, your managing agent, your appointed managing agent, should inform the scheme executives once they receive invitations to seminars like this to share. NAMA seminars is usually not free of charge. It depends on whether you are a registered member of NAMA or not. Um, that would determine the cost of um, the attendance. And then I would like to mention this. Um, I'm very, very um, impressed with a, a, a group on social media on Facebook, which is called Sectional Title Living in South Africa. Um, this is open to all scheme executives, members, uh, role players in the industry. And 
members and scheme executives can receive very valuable information there. Just to mention a few, um, and I don't want to uh, talk about only specific per the people, but it's necessary for the public to know this. Um, there's, for example, a lady by the name of Zerlinda. She's from TVDM Consultants, um, an attorney, and she, she provides uh, weekly webinars or seminars on a Thursday online, free of charge. I'm talking about Willi Roos of Stratafin that recently posted a very valuable thing, um, a tool called a Sectional Title Compliance Checklist. Um, there's also ordinary members, Teresa Williams, Nigel Capito, that provides very valuable information. Um, I can also refer to Puna LaRue of Meeting Pal that would advise trustees of equipment or apps on your phone that's extremely usable when attending meetings and having to count votes and also um, how to take minutes of the meeting if you don't have a professional managing agent that does this on your behalf. There's also Aubrey Snayman of Multiprof is a town planner that gives um, advice very regularly on what to do when structural changes are made in sectional title mm. and the processes to follow. And then lastly, um, one I can remember is Zetfin, my, Mr. Michael Schaefer, who is um, a company that provides financial aid to body corporates. So I've talked about this maintenance plan that the three, um, scheme executives have to adhere to. But say, for example, the roofs need to be repaired. And the cost of that is an estimated 400000 but you only have 20 or 30,000 rand in your pity. Companies like Stratafin or Zetfin can provide financial aid on a loan agreement to the body corporate in order to assist them to have these tasks performed. So there are many ways um, to get educated via social media, um, via this group, via NAMA, via CSOS. Um, mm. But if you have a professional managing agent, they should guide you where to obtain all of the information you require. Great, thank you for that. And I, I'm guessing that the private, the private property podcast has just made it to that list of a place where you can find information oh, sure. when it comes when it comes to this. Yes, definitely. Um, before before we close our conversation tonight, can you just tell us about some of the trainings um, that that that's offered at Fidza, at Fidzana, um, uh, Estates that you offer to scheme executives, and how can one um, um, use these ones and as as a as a body corporate and as a scheme? Um, I like the fact that you mentioned all of those ones and i'm sure that um, our family watching will really really appreciate and really use them so that they can also get that information but just talk us through um some of the training options that you guys have all right um i think you first need to know that this is unique um i'm not aware of any other managing agent in south africa that provides this kind of training for scheme executives fitzan has made um a scheme training uh, video session in 2017 already. We are thinking of having that upgraded shortly. But this is an online course for scheme executives at a minimal fee. I, you ask me right now exactly what it is. I think it's five, 560 odd rand, I'm not sure, where you have 20 small videos of approximately 10 to 15 minutes each, taking you through the legislation, as I've mentioned, the management rules, conduct rules, CSOS legislation, at the end, you, which you can do at your own time and at your own leisure. And once you've completed this, you will be required to fill in a multiple question list. And if you have um, a passing rate of 75%, you will be issued with a certificate to say that you are now a trained scheme executives. So if you have if you need more information on this, please visit our website at www.fitzan.co.za under training and you'll find all you need there. 
Thank you so much. Such valuable information. I really, really appreciate um, you you mentioning those because it does sound like something so lucrative for, for schemes to do because if you have the information, I always say if you're armed with the information, you do right. And when you do right, you get the right rewards. Um, just any closing words from you from the conversation we had tonight before we close off? Education, education, education. Um, the more educated you are, the more... Um, um, what shall I say, the more confidence you'll have yeah. in running your schemes affairs efficiently. Yes. And once you do that and people see the value, you will definitely be reappointed, although it's very hard work. Mm. Trust, body corporates cannot do without trustees or scheme executives. So please mm. take heed of this. Um, there's lots of help outside there. And if any of your listeners would like to know more, they're more than welcome to contact me. All right. Thank you so much for opening that door. And I'm sure that some of the questions that we are probably getting on, 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 the, on the live currently will be answered as, as they reach out to you for those, for those answers. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good evening, bro. Thank you to me and to you too. And once again, what a privilege to have been invited to this. Good Thank luck and so God bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And just like that, we reached the end of tonight's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are in that sectional title, make sure that you appoint the right trustees and make sure that at least a budget is allocated for them to be able to go through training and for them to get to know so that to get to know some of these um, scheme acts and them to be able to do the right thing at the right time. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a blessed evening. <laughs>